How do you know if you have too many clothes in your closet? Let's find out. Hello, fashionista. I'm Nancy Queen, and I'm here to help you build a closet full of clothes you love to wear so that you love getting dressed every single day. Today, we're talking about how many clothes is too many. We live in a very fast fashion world. You can buy clothes very inexpensively, and we all have amassed a lot of stuff. So do you have too much? In this video, we're gonna cover all of that, and you'll be able to know whether you have too much, whether you need to pare down, and what you should be paring down to. In a recent study from Closet Made, we have too many clothes, and here's the research to back it up. The average woman says that 21% of her closet is unwearable, and she has never worn 12% of her clothes. 10% of us get depressed every time we open our closet, and one in four of us feel like our closets are disorganized. 33% of us say we have clothes that are too tight. Another 24% of us say we have clothes that are too loose. And a whopping 44% of us can't find an item in our closet at least once a month. So how many clothes should we own? In addition, how can we make the most of every garment that we own? Let's start by talking about how many clothes we need. Now, as much as I want to give you a straight number, the number varies from person to person based on your lifestyle, your budget, your career. It doesn't matter if you have 50 clothes or 500 clothes. All it boils down to is this one question. Is your closet working for you? For example, do you open your closet and say, I have nothing to wear? Do you spend more than five minutes in the morning choosing an outfit? Do the clothes fit your current lifestyle? Do you buy more special occasion outfits or everyday outfits? Do you hold on to clothes for sentimental reasons? Do you have skinny or fat clothes in case you lose or gain weight? Do you feel depressed when you get dressed? Do you have any clothes that need to be mended or altered? If you answered yes to any or all of these questions, it's time to reevaluate your wardrobe. The problem is that you don't have too many or too few clothes in your closet. It's that you don't have the right clothes to fit your current lifestyle. You see, whenever we have a lifestyle change, our clothes need to change as well. We tend to hold on to those old clothes either for sentimental reasons or because we think we're going to need them in the future. We also hold on to clothes for when we gain or lose weight. Holding on to clothes that we don't actually wear creates visual clutter that we have to look at every single morning. It doesn't have to be that way. Let's fill your closet with the clothes you need that you feel good in and you love to wear every single day. Just by making a few simple tweaks to your wardrobe, you could have a closet filled with clothes you love to wear, get dressed in a cute outfit in under five minutes, have clothes that fit you, have clothes you feel good wearing, and have an original closet and have an organized closet with a place for everything. My favorite part is you'll get compliments every time you go out in public. Now, if you've watched my other videos, I have a three-step process that I use for organizing and cleaning out closets. I've taught lots of people how to do this. It's simple and it takes the guesswork out of deciding what to keep, what not to keep. In step one, you're going to go ahead and weed out your closet you're going to purge. You're going to take out any clothes that don't fit you today. It doesn't matter if they're too big, they're too tight, or they need to be altered. Take them out of your closet. Clothes that don't fit your current lifestyle. If you were a teacher and now you're a stay-at-home mom, your clothes have changed. Vice versa, if you were a stay-at-home mom and now you've gone back into the workforce, your clothes have changed, so you're going to need to make changes to adapt to that. You're gonna take out anything that you don't feel good in or look good wearing. Even if you spend a lot of money on it, it's not doing you any good keeping it around if it isn't serving you. You're also gonna take any out any clothes that are stained, worn out, ripped, or torn. And one of the hardest things, but I promise you, you will feel so good when you do this, is take out 
any clothes that you have that have sentimental value. That includes prom dresses, first date outfits, wedding dresses, anything that churns up a memory that you don't wear but you're holding on to just because it has a good memory to it. And finally, any clothes that you haven't worn in the past year. Now I've gotten a lot of comments about this because of what we've been going through for the past two years where we have the new work from home life uh, and offices have been closed down. However, I, I'm not really talking about that so much. Yes, if you know that you're going to be going back, it's okay to hold on to those things. I'm talking about those of us who were in the working world, then we became stay-at-home moms, we've been out of the working world for 15 years, and we think those power suits that we wore are still going to be relevant. They're not. They dress totally differently today. Take those out of your wardrobe. Now, I know this concept of removing clothes from your wardrobe sounds really counterintuitive when you're saying, Nancy, why do you want me to take away clothes when I have nothing to wear? I need more clothes. Well, there's a thing called Pareto's Pareto's, I'm not sure exactly how to say it, Pareto's principle. And it's called the 80-20 rule. And it states that you wear 20% of your clothes, 80% of the time. So if you think of that, 80% of your clothes are in your closet and not even helping you at all. If you could take those out and only see the clothes that you wear all the time, what a beautiful closet you'd have. And then you'd actually be able to see where you have holes, where there's, you know, holes in your wardrobe, like, oh, I need more white t-shirts to fit in. When you have all that other stuff, it's so overwhelming that you can't see the good through the forest of things that shouldn't be there. Now, step two, I just did a whole video on this, is organizing. You're going to organize your closet by classification. That helps you be able to mix and match. I've organized my little closet here by classification. So my t-shirts are together, my shirts are together, sweaters jackets, dresses, pants, skirts, all together. And then I have them in order from light to dark in color order so that I can easily find what I need. And it gives me the ideas of, oh, like I look at this pair of shorts and I think, oh, I could wear it with this shirt, this shirt, oh, this shirt, this shirt, the sweater. It just gives me so many other options as opposed to only seeing it as an outfit and only wearing it that way. And step three, now in my other video, I said step three is putting the clothes back in your closet, organized like that. But in this video, step three is going and purchasing the right garments. And the reason I feel this video is so important is because I've been getting a lot of questions and comments like this one. This one is from A. Alberts and she says, off the bat, a lot of my favorite pieces I haven't worn in a long time because they're buried, camouflaged by lots of filler. I also should but don't plan my outfits the night before so I can try them out together and see if they work. Lots of times layering is a flop. The sleeves underneath too long, necklines don't match, v-neck versus round, bow, low cut versus high cut. Then of course living in New York City there's the whole other issue of matching bag, scarf, shoes, hat, and coat. So normally I just keep it very basic and boring. Well, that is the number one thing I'm here to help you with because we don't want you to be buried in clothes that you don't want. So you're going to do that purge that I talked about. You're gonna clean out your closet, get rid of all those things that you don't wear, and then you're going to only put back the clothes you do wear and you're going to put them in by classification. Then what I want you to do and don't laugh because this works, is I want you to take a notebook, a notepad, or just use your phone, have a notes section on your phone that you write down items I need, and just make a quick note so that when you're trying on those clothes the night before or the morning of, and every time you go and try something on and you think, oh, this V-neck shirt, this V-neck sweater, if I had a crew neck t-shirt for underneath, I would wear this thing all the time. You're gonna write down that you need a crew neck t-shirt. Okay, so the next time you're out shopping, you will be buying with intention. You're going to be looking for those pieces that your wardrobe needs 
only to help you build a better closet. And I guarantee you this is a game changer by making this simple step. So next time you're out, you have this list of these things you know you need. Once you get them in your closet, all of a sudden you're like, wow, how do I have a closet that just works? It all coordinates. Everything is there when I need it. And I hate, don't hate getting dressed anymore because you've been shopping with intention. Now, I want you to try this next time you are dealing with your closet, you're feeling frustrated, you're gonna make notes, and I want you to give it a try and let me know in the comments how that's working for you. Has it made a change? I can't wait to hear and I'll see you in the next video.